morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the 77th Municipal Skating Rink Building Committee meeting. Um, we're going to continue on with discussions that we started last night relative to value engineering dis, uh, discussions to hopefully get us back into a budget that uh, we have to be able to build this building. With that, does anyone have any comments after sleeping on it overnight? So I'll open it up to the committee, Anne Marie. Uh, thanks, Mark. Yeah, I have been thinking last night and I've been thinking of the, the flip side of this, not just the cuts, but where can we find more money? Um, I think we've mentioned before going to Belmont Light, DPW with the water, see what they can do for us on this project. Um, and I think in the in the spirit of throwing out everything, major user of this rink of the schools, you know, does the school department have any money they can kick in at this point? Um, we're nickel and diming this. We saw what we were potentially eliminating last night, and we were talking 15,000, 22,000, et cetera. So I think anything we can get from the school department would be a big help. But I think my biggest thought, and I'm almost apologize for not coming up with this sooner, but there is one more source of potential funds in the town, and that is the Kendall Fire Insurance Fund. That fund was set aside for building projects. Now, it's been used over the years as startup money for building projects, and I think many of us in this room have benefited from that fund. We're at the point now, though, where we're down to the end of our projects. You know, the town has, has finally, after whatever, 24 years, caught up with that list of projects. The only thing hanging out there in the future is the DPW complex, and that will need to be done in the next six or eight years. But I would suggest that we take a hard look at what's in that Kendall Fund, what can be accessed and used for this project, because this is a legitimate use for that money. That's my offering for this morning. It, yeah, Anne-Marie, I think that is a great idea and i think it is one of the things that uh has been percolating a little bit in some other conversations but uh i think it has a ton of merit and maybe we should look into a little more around what's available there and kind of what the process is because i i totally agree with you i think it's it's kind of purpose built um to help with capital and building projects and you know this is probably one that could significantly benefit from it who's that organization and that's the Kendall Fund and, and Anne Marie, so what actually discussions a recently? It's about just slightly over two million. Sure. Right. So th there's definitely something there that would be helpful to our project. I'm not necessarily suggesting we take all of it. I think it's important to leave something there for future projects. But I think this is a building project. We did not draw on it in the beginning, and this might be the time for us to to do something with it. Okay. So any other comments from people in the room? No, uh, on line committee, doesn't appear to be. So we can continue in discussions that we had last night or what I was potentially suggesting is we look at Skanska's more detailed cost estimate and then maybe zoom, dig down into that if we want. Um, and, and make sure we're getting the value we think we're getting in the VEs. As we're taking things out, we understand what those actual dollars are. So I'm open for suggestions. So Don, Don uh, Jake, can you bring up this sheet first? The detailed estimate? This one. The Summary? Yeah. At the alternate summary done with the no. no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, that's just the, the trade bit. Yep. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. That one was sent out. Sent out there. Yes. You've seen this before.
We're waiting for that. Now, you want to talk a little bit about interior masonry? I talked a little bit about. Sure. Investigation of the interior partition types. Um, we are predominantly using uh, block masonry for the interior partitions. And the question was, um, you know, at that unit rate, um, are there walls that could be changed to a metal stud with uh, a gypsum board, like a could be maybe like a high impact resistant or um, you know a stronger type of board, um, but that could be um, at a much lower unit cost than block. And so um, I had done. You know, a study on uh, linear footage and uh, where where we could see this reduction. Uh, I think there's definitely a we should take a look at the back of house spaces and the mechanical rooms. Um, I had a couple of graphics that I marked up. I could forward to next, them next one. Yeah, if they wanted to look at it. Um, you the long story short is I think there are kind of three possible levels of change and where we could take some savings. Um, you know, my gut instinct and using some of the numbers of unit costs and what we're seeing. Um, I don't think I'm wrong in saying taking, like switching everything out except in a few key areas could be a couple hundred thousand dollars of savings. Um, but uh, if we scale that back, I think there's kind of a maybe like a sixty thousand dollar and one hundred twenty thousand dollar and two hundred some thousand dollar level of change um, based on what we prioritize. And a couple of things to point out, like at the front dressing rooms where we are against an exterior wall and we have metal panel, we have to do a metal stud and sheet rock back up anyway um, type of wall. So in some of those rooms, there are already two stud walls and two CMU walls. And so with that kind of thinking, we they can't all be blocked anyway. So maybe we just need to commit to that they are just metal stud with a, you know, you know gypsum or sheetrock with maybe some sort of um, Four foot protective wainscot panel that you do see used in some rooms. So, um, and maybe it's four, maybe it's six. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever, whatever that is. Is there a code issue for doing that? Uh, so, we would need to have a two hour rating wall between where the north conventional structure meets the barn structure, and then another one where the um, south conventional structure meets the barn structure. So, I would, I would keep those walls as CMU. Uh, but so, so, help, so help me out. You're telling me we need a rated wall between the dressing rooms and an exterior space. No, we need a rated wall between the where the north conventional structure meets the barn structure. So with a flat roof portion in the back. In the north? She's not talking the north. She's talking the south. I'm talking that's where we need a two, two hour rated wall. And then where the barn structure meets the south conventional structure needs to be two hour rated. But the South Convention structure is what? It's a it's an open arcade for the dressing room. She's just talking dressing room. Well, I, I'm actually I am saying this is kind of a study of all the tier partitions. Correct. And but right now you were talking dressing rooms. In that example where there's two that are correct four and two that are blocked. But as we look at this, I would also like because of the fire separation and even durability, the kind of main division between the barn. <clears throat> And the, the long wow. dressing rooms would be CMU. Yeah, and the division between the, the ice strength and the north side would be CMU. Um, if it's helpful, I can share this markup to somebody right now. Um, you know, I don't know. What, what, what I would suggest we do is to set up a group with yourself, okay. some of them from CHA, some from CHA, and some from the AXA, and go through what you've marked up. And then scan speak and then put price on it and see what it comes down to. Just to everyone, CMU interior and drywall interior is 
1.7 million dollars plus or minus yeah. big number and it's not on in like more some extent it's not on like you know it's not uncommon to have drywall walls and mechanical spaces and storage spaces and that's what we have across the high school it's so we have a block absolutely but it's not like you're getting an inferior uh, I mean, it, 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 it is walls that will take a beating with hockey sticks and hockey bags and the whole bit, but probably not in certain spaces like storage and other things, right? So how do you protect the space that you need to protect? Mm -hmm. right, so that really, yeah. You know how to walk through it with a smaller group. Yeah, and, and literally and almost hallway by hallway. Hallway by hallway. Yeah, room by room. And, and I agree, like, as you would see this, you know, we talked to those main divisions for fire separation. And um, I think if, you know, kind of our narrow, all ways to access the locker rooms. Uh, and the example we space maybe the holding or there's water in there. That's kind of like that needs to stay blocked. But really everything else could be a metal stud partition type. But even in the Zamboni room, it could be CMU block up to a certain level and then change. Perhaps, yeah. Again, if that you know, I don't know what the design change and time money again in this i just um if there's anything that's like an easy wholesale swap i think we should consider it okay so, so let's take that under advisement is can you then i'll set up a time and coordinate with the various parties yeah i can help set that up what's that i can help set that up you know okay mike is that something you can do or is that something jake Either one. Yeah, well, and I'll probably take it be good. Yeah, we can also go to the trailer. We can loop in Jill as well, just to get. Yeah, I think we ought to go through it first and loop in Jill. Yep. Don't take up all our time. That all has to happen pretty quickly, though, right? You could. It's got to be like Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, right, because it's still got to. Yeah. Can I have one more that I know had been kicking around that I didn't see on the lease? Maybe we investigated it, didn't go anywhere. But on the northwest corner of the building, there is a door. Yes. There's some question as to whether or not do we need that for kind of legal egress or, you know, what, what's the story there? Is there any flexibility to? I discussed this with Christian and he was going to look into it further. Sorry. Sorry. What was that? The door at the northwest corner of the building that comes out and then you have a walkway along the entire west side. Mm -hmm. Do we need that? Could we have an egress door that would come out the back of the rink? And end up on the fire lane, and now you can eliminate the entire walkway along the whole west side. That's going, so you're saying taking where the ramp is, just going straight back to the north side. Yes. So we're going to be cutting through a mechanical room. And you have to rearrange the mechanical room. Yes. Christian, let's just start out real easy. I'm tired of hearing about architecture. We've got to cut four million dollars out of this project. This is MEP. Yeah. I understand. Uh, yeah, we have two. We have two storage rooms back there. We can return the mechanical. Sure, it's going to be a redesign. Understood. Yeah, but we can't just keep saying no. We can't do it. No, we can't I didn't do say, it. No, we can't. I said it's going to be a redesign. But you, every time you start something, it's always no. We can't. I didn't say that. I said it's. Going I'm to tired be of it. Mark, I said it's going Start to working as a team player. We've got to cut stuff out of this job, Christian. Do you understand? I didn't say we I couldn't do it. Mark. I said it's going to be a redesign. He, he gets Correct. Right. There's going to be a lot of redesigns. Yes. Oh, he gets we it. have to come That's to something. Let's move, let's move to the next one. Yeah. He gets it. Okay. 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 Locker rooms before you go there. Locker rooms. Yes. We have four. Can we make those just two and eliminate the interior corridor down the middle? Um, yeah, that's, this is a, this is a question really for schools. You have two locker rooms in the certain seasons, like in hockey season, one would be for girls. One would be for boys in the, in the fall. It's all football. Can you just have two and then you can eliminate the corridor down the middle? A lot of CMU block and interior petitions. Yeah, but you get JV room. You got a JV team and a boys JV team. And the same thing with the football. You got a freshman team. You got three football teams. And then you have two hockey teams for girls and two for boys. I don't see how you can eliminate that. But no, no, but do you need can the JV boys and J you can have each side have a room? Do they need a room? Do they need a wall in between? I, I think it's necessary just to separate the team. Yeah, what happens though when you do that, and Christian and I have talked about this, you end up with this corridor down the middle. 
that you end up with two, one, you lose space, and two, you have to build two CMU block walls. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I look at, I'm, I think we should be cutting stuff. But if we're going to talk about trying to redesign this thing here, after we've looked at this for like a year and a half, I mean, some of it doesn't make a lot of sense. We're going to redesign it or something to save, you know, I think to Pat Bruce's point last night, we're going to take the money from this hand and put it to this hand, and it's going to cost us money to do all this stuff. I mean, we've looked at this. We've had these plans for a long, long time. And now, you know, I understand the intent of it, but we're, we're looking at this, and now we're going to redesign this whole thing. I mean, I, mean, I think that's short-sighted. I mean, to Anne Marie's point, she could step in uh, with a thing. I mean, like, there's some areas here that we can cut. Like, we talked about this thing with the town, bringing in, having the town be responsible for bringing the water and the sewer in. Where is that information? That's that's seven weeks ago that we discussed about that. We still don't have that information. And that's a major thing. I mean, the town probably could put the put it in cheaper, separate it from the contract, take the water across the street, bring it right to the building so the site work guy doesn't have to do that. That's going to be a big hunk of money. The same thing with electric light. I mean, you know, I've been living there all my life. There was a, the electric light's going to be said, hey, look, you're the provider here. You're the provider here. Bring us the power. Why are we paying for all that power here? Help us with this. This is costing us a lot of money. Those are big, big ticket items that don't compromise this building. I mean, sitting here, you know, sitting here looking at, we're going to redesign this, we're going to take this out, we're going to put sheetrock on, on walls, and I, I get it. Those are great cost savings. But we're kind of at the eleventh hour to start redesigning the building here at this point. I mean, we've had this, we've had this scope, for, we've had this scope for for months and months and months, and now we're going to sit and like chip this apart. We're going to take the whole front off. I mean, I can, you know, so Trees has their hand raised. Yeah. So I mean, the, I just think if we look at some of those big cost savings here, maybe we could get the town to, to maybe they could take that part of it out. Certainly, there's a cost associated with that. But I think if okay. we pull that just out, let me they could do it. Talk, we discussed this with Patrice, and we'll get to you, Patrice, in a second. EPW said they can do it. We're going to get a cost from Mike for what its value is, at least from a, the site contract. But EPW does not have the staff to do it. They will go out and get a separate bid. So all you're saving is the mock-up between one and the other. So right. we can we can look at what that is. Right. But it's not going to be huge money, guys. But it's paid out of another pocket. Yes. Potentially. Maybe. Yes. yes. Paid, paid out of another pocket. Potentially. Yes. Patrice? Does he ever hand up? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just real quickly to the point that Dante was just making. So we did have conversations with the DPW director in regards to the water and, and bringing it to the site. There is no in-house capability uh, to do that. We would have to outsource. And yeah. there is a dollar threshold of what the town could afford. Um, just talking loosely off the record, I did speak to the DPW director, and it's somewhere around fifty thousand dollars. But other than that, um, the town is also, you know, also in need of all, all the funds that it has. But I did have that conversation with uh, the DPW director. But you know, they, you know, we can't do this in house. And you know, the other point I'd like to make is routinely with the building projects, and I know, Emory, you can attest to this, the town is always there, willing and ready to help where it can. So I, I want to make sure that the people that are watching this is the town's always in partnership with the building communities, and we're always looking for ways to help ease the burden, uh, because none of these projects um, go as smoothly as, as we would like, and sometimes the town is looking for ways to help. So I just wanted to make that point. Thanks. And and Patrice, isn't doesn't the town have a $25,000 Limit for non bidding it, so this would have to be go out as a bid, correct? At 50,000, yeah, it would also have to be, yep, that's correct. It would have to be bid, so we'd be doing similar things that the building committee would be doing. We'd just be taking the funds from a different uh, funding source. I think we should look at it, correct. that's all I'm saying. Just look at it. And so we're, Mike, we're talking, I'm not get, saying that we get cost in, uh, yeah, I don't think and I can't. It's not a level, though. I mean, I don't have the doll that I have top of my head, but the site work bids we're getting this week has a breakout. Yes. So, but what if we just get a $49,000 transfer of funds? 
Wouldn't that be simpler? I think we have to look at both. Okay. We have to look at yep. figure out where we are. But let's continue on with what you're saying, Dante. Last night you were saying we need to cut things and redesign things or whatever to get us back in the budget. Now you're changing it and saying we don't want to change no, anything. No, 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 no. I, I posted it last night and I said that we need to cut things. But we, if we promised that we sold this as a community center, that we sold this that we're going to have, we're going to take in the farms building down, we're going to provide them. There's things that we promised the community. And we need to meet those. We need to meet those. And I understand everybody's looking at all these things. I certainly am willing to compromise. But to build something that's not what we all want is just, it, it's too much. So we have to compromise. We all agree that, right? We all agree that there's got to be some kind of compromise. But what's the, But it can't be so that we... We just missed the whole, we missed the whole boat. We don't want the building was on the right. So what's, what's the way we, we have to be creative how we save some money. I, I, I thought the, the, there's a potential for the DPW to, to help with that, the electric light to help with that. If there isn't, they're in it, but let's dismiss it. We don't have, we still don't have those numbers. We talked about it seven weeks ago. We still don't have those numbers. So how can we make an educated decision on, is there a cost savings there? But I'm I'm very much willing to cut the, the building and save on some of these things. I'm willing to abandon the, the uh, uh, abandon the uh, windows on the building. But some of those things just you just can't compromise. Just putting two locker rooms in and taking four two of them out is 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 not really what we promised the school department or everybody else. We took the white field house down. We we're going to provide locker space back to the, to the school. As much as I'd like to take the locker space out, it's irresponsible for me to put, to put that out there because there's not, there's, there's no, that's not. You're not, we're not reducing the space. We're just making them two large locker rooms. I just think when you have two teams going in and one team's in and the kids have money in their pocket, and who's in that locker room? I mean, we've all been through that. Why are the JV kids up on the boys' side? Why are the you know why are they, there's too many kids involved with space? Everybody leaves their their pants and they don't lock up their locker room routinely. There's money there. I mean, there's just a lot of complications there. The JV team should have their area. The, uh, they have a separate coach. The boy, the Vasi boys have their team in their area that should have a separate area too. I mean, I, I think that's an important part of it. That's. You never, we never had duos between the two locker rooms before. I we had one locker room. You had girls in the front, the JVs in the front, and the Vatsi was in the back. It was no door rooms. between them. No door between them, but it was two separate rooms. Correct. And the same thing downstairs with the boys. The boys were in the front. The thing in the back was two separate rooms. The boys, the JV team could speak to the JV team. Coach could speak to that team, and the other team could have two different. One team was dressing, the other team was coming and going. It wasn't in one room. Okay. Bill, Bill, Bill Shea, uh, two things. One, first, I'd like to thank uh, Michael and Shanska. I think Michael has made an excellent suggestion that does not impact program, yet saves us square footage by sliding the rink into the, taking one bay of the barn out and sliding it into the uh, lower area. Uh, I think that would also help us at the back of the building because it's further away from the tracks and any concern we might have with impact in the tracks whatever that bay is, probably 20, 25 feet. Um, so I, I think that has something we should seriously consider as far as uh, a commitment to stay in program. We didn't commit to the town how many square feet we were going to build. We sped a rink with certain uh, features. His suggestion allows us to build a rink with something maintaining those features. So we should, I think we should have a serious look at that. Can you, can you explain that? Yeah, let, let me explain one more yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Tom. With respect to the, the locker room issue, I believe we should... Uh, why don't we just have the four rooms and only finish two of them and someone else can finish them the other two later. We'll save a few bucks there. That can be a number four if we have time. But, but finishing is not. I, I understand, but we, we're making. It's the, it's the plumbing, showers, and all of that, I, which is all communal. I understand. I think to the to, to point, you, you, you're really, you, you're cheating them on the functionality of the building by, by, by that change, is my, is my thought. That's fine. But remember, when finishing out these lockers, yeah. we have the lockers already. Yeah. So it's, you're going to bring the lockers in. You're not going to leave them in the trailer. So it's, 
the rooms are going to be finished. Okay, I'm just saying yeah. that's one, one way to put it as a four for future a few sure. months. Yep. Thank um, you. Thank you. Mike Morris from Skanska. Just want to preface that this was just a, a very loose uh, attempt to try to solve some of the problems we heard during yesterday's discussion. It's not baked. It would take serious thought from people month. And with my skill set, uh, but ultimately, it's really combining two of the options we talked about that had some kind of negative discussion around them yesterday with uh, removing from one to two line, as you see on the screen today. Uh, and the other option was removing the high base structure from two to three line. So the commentary we heard uh, yesterday was when you remove the low base structure from one to two line. You're really just seeing the front face of a box, the engineering metal building you're seeing, you're walking up to the building to that high base structure. And that was some feedback we got. But when you take the high base structure from two to three as a separate VE, um, you're, you're just extending the low base structure. So the, the thought that we're presenting today is kind of combining both of those options into one. So you're, you're, you're remo removing from one to two line, uh, and pushing the high base structure back. So you still get that single story structure in front of the barn, so to speak, uh, and giving that appearance where you're not just walking up to a big high wall. But that, that was one thought. And the other thought, it's hard to tell in this plan, but right now, this plan shown on the screen is the, the 500 seat bleachers, which we talked a little bit about yesterday. In reality, the bleachers are actually to the right of five line. So there's a big, there's a larger opening um, at the radius of the boards than what's shown on this drawing, if you follow the logic here. So the, the second part of that that we heard yesterday was, uh, you know, the need and the, to have a bigger lobby. So in this scenario, we would have to explore it, and I don't know what it looks like or how it would look or how it would function, but kind of <clears throat> extending the lobby into the barn in that space somehow, some way. So another set of walls where that, that lobby kind of gets pushed into the high base structure, <laughs> you know, yeah, something where that mouse is, yep. It, trying to make that lobby bigger. And I think, I, I don't know how to do it, what the, the best way to do it and make it function. Uh, but I, you know, the other the last piece is taking the snack bar that would be removed from two to two to one and finding a space inside the building hopefully in that same general area near the lobby um, to duplicate that in the rink. Similar to like you have on the cells, on the bottom of the page, we have some of those breakout rooms. Again, it takes it take time, you have to understand the JCCs, how much room you have, all that stuff. Um, but if we're challenged to kind of get creative and find ways to do this, it reduces envelope, it reduces footprint, it reduces volume, foundations, structure, um, it, there's a lot to it and it would take a lot of work, but it's, it's a lot of coordination as well. I, so if we're talking about Zoom effort here, so it's just <laughs> all ideas are on the table, right? <laughs> Our VE presentation was, you know, trying to scale back things without changing too much program to eliminate the need for this domino effect of all the consultants to get everything coordinated. So that was our intent with what we're trying to lop off. If we're talking about all these redesigns and everything, you have, it may save money, but again, as stated last night, the cost of that domino effect could end up negating any savings. Yeah, this is Ted Galante. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Mike, I'm, I'm looking at your email and, um, and it makes, I, I get your intent and it makes, it makes sense from a, shrinking the building perspective and i think you know switching the uh snack shack snack bar from you know one side of the restroom to the other side makes a lot of sense vis-a-vis -vis, um uh keeping plumbing in the same area and, you know and i get between last night and this morning it's sort of a you know a quick idea so there is some merit to it we, we would have to study it and try and figure out if there's a way to do it um it it does bring up some coordination issues that we'd have to work with consultants on um so you know if, if you know but if it cuts square footage out of the building and and we get you know from one to two out and and the high bay of two to three out 
um, it would be good to know, you know, what the what the magnitude of cost savings might be. You know, we we threw a swag last night of 200k on the high bay piece. I don't know what that, you know, where we are with these numbers, but um, we can look at that. I have I had another similar idea that I didn't send out, but I but it was actually moving the snack shack to the rear of the building, but. Um, brings up other both of the both of them bring up program complications um, mine makes the snack shack too far away yours makes it too crowded at the front neither of them have been studied enough to really think about it but totally agree i, I yeah i it just seemed like the those two options removing the lobby from one to two was a big dollar value but it was yeah. really kind of not pleasing to the committee and removing the high bay also had the same big dollar value but not so i was just Trying to fit program in, in yeah, yes, yeah, I yeah, get yeah. it. I don't I know it. the answer, but I just yeah, and it makes it. But it's a good, it's a good stab. I appreciate it. So we'll we'll have to if it's if if we can get some money out of it and we and and things are trending in the right direction, we can study it and try and figure out you know how to make it work. And Christian's right; there are wrestling matches with the consultants. It's it's a big big problem right now, but we'll deal with that. They all get paid, right? Tell them to do their work. That's it. We'll pay them. They're going to do their work. Going to give them an extra. We might have to. To, if, to save this, we may have to. The, the other one, Bill, I think moving the building forward yeah. would result in significant site work redesign. Why? All the plumbing. Everything. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying move the building forward. I'm saying maintain the front of the building that you have. And just and when you use Mike's idea, don't 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 take don't leave the building don't set, suck the building back when you do it suck the building forward to the front line yeah, so the two line will be the front of the building right so two lines but, but two line to where one line is yeah. on the site yeah and then on the back end uh, so none of your site work in the front is going to change it's all the same and then you gain uh, 20 feet in the back further away from the tracks sure no no I, yeah great. all i'm saying is we have all the utilities that run down the fire lane so now they're 20 feet short. Correct. Yes. It's just, it's just okay. redrawing it all. I understand. Are we making this area here very congested? Isn't this a real congested area here right now? I mean, this is this is pulling, so isn't this real congested here? What are you pointing to? Oh. I'm pointing to right, right where you get into the ring. Right where you get yeah, into yeah. the ring. And I think and I think that's and I think that's you know, Mike's study was done really quick. That's one of the problems with Mike's study. We just we have to look at it and, and we would uncongest that. I think you're right. We would have to uncongest that, but I think it's got merit. We have to we have to take a closer look. I mean, when people, all the people go to a hockey game, grandparents or grandmothers, they'll go watch the kid play or learn to skate people who've never been in a hockey rink before. They'll go into the building and then they'll, when it gets a little cold, they'll go outside to stay warm or try to attempt to stay warm on most of these rinks. It, and so if that could be an area, a viewing area that from that corner that they could see into to the rink, maybe they'll they'll utilize that more, but people will want to stay warm and get out of the cold in between the periods and stuff like that. So if we shrink it, we compromise that, that's okay. But that area there is good. I mean, I like the theory and I think it's a good suggestion and it's a good look at, it. but I think Ted and the team should look at it quickly. And if there's any merit to it, say, yes, I'm going to explore it even further, but to either bring it to the table or dismiss it so we know so we can it's great to put all these ideas out there and i think it's very helpful we're trying to save money but we should look at that quick you know how long will what, it take what about eliminating the skate rental at the front of the building put them where in the back one in the back sure i don't think that's a good idea people want to come right. in but it gives it it gives it does what you look ask me yeah. or you end up with that additional space right, right. yeah how much can we shift the the bleaches to the right, you know, with just two hundred twenty five seats. So it's on. Yeah, the, they're not on the in this drawing. They're 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 outdated. They're, they they are by the five line, as Mike talks about. They're um. They're that's the, centering. Can we move them down even further? Uh, well, they're centered now, so we. They're, they're almost at the blue line. So. But guess, you know, can we just can we talk about Bill Shays? comment about moving the building forward um 
that might have a lot it, there's design issues i get but but that might have a lot a lot of merit if we're making all the utilities 20 feet shorter we get further away from this whole question of a retaining wall i know the building committee doesn't want a retaining wall by the tracks but the engineer of record wants a retaining wall so so there's a discussion there but if we move further away that opens up it feels to me like that's that there's some cost savings there. Mike or Jim from Skanska weigh in if if this is if it's too late for that. But but that seems like a it's a viable alternative. And don't we also get this is Tom Gazunas, don't we also get the ground doesn't slope up as much, so there's less excavation, especially along the soccer field side. Yeah. The, the other yeah. thing, Tom, it might Mike Morris from Skanska and we're just I don't know this, but it might help with the turning radius of the, of the fire truck as well. Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't save us any money. I'm not really concerned about that. But well, it would on the hammerhead. If you don't have to build that hammerhead out, and that, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right, Mike. You're yeah. right. I'm being facetious. You're right. We, yeah. we 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 have yeah yeah. I mean, I, I think it's got merit as an idea. Let us let us look at that, Bill. That's a good one. Michael. No. Well, this is uh Jim Kraft with Skanska. And in addition to the looking at that, I was going to talk about the uh, yeah, the fire lane and the turnaround there. It would definitely help that. But um, the, the snack shack seems to be a pinch point there. But there seems to be an open space down at the um, other side where the double doors are exiting. Um, if the There's not too many utilities connecting to the snack shack, right? Well, there's yeah. sinks and such, but yeah. Yeah, but it's a small water line, right? Small water yeah. line, a little bit electric. It's, it's not like it's a kitchen. It's just a snack shack. And that would allow the access, if you put it in kind of in that spot, maybe have a hallway in between for the exit. Um, it seems like you could sneak it right in there, potentially, to um, serve both outside and inside, perhaps, um, for the football. And, and Yeah, it does have the outside method. Right, so you'd be on the outside wall. You could have a window and then a window on the inside, perhaps. Um, it seems like it seems like a, a space that's just an egress right now, usable. You're talking to him. I think he's talking about the southeast corner, right? The lower left part of the stage, oh, between the sprinkler room, between the uh, sprinkler room and the dressing room. Yeah, right okay. so you can yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah, oh, that makes sense, Jim. I mean, all, you know, all of this changes the circulation of people moving in and around the building. There's no question. It does. It's, yeah, it's a lot of study. Yeah. But we can, you know, I mean, I, you know, you got whatever, 10 kids coming into that, to those rooms, 10 or 12 kids. So yeah. there's, you know, but we'll, we'll, each one has merit. We'll start them. Since we're all throwing an idea out real quick, <laughs> that little oh, corridor between the dressing rooms, if you eliminate that width and shift the top two onto the bottom two, it allows that skate rental space to almost double in size. And perhaps that is something more like at some of the place where it's a dual purpose. It's skate, ticketing, snack, and then you could serve both rink side and to the exterior. And it kind of preserves the kind of clean, you know, space inside the rink. Because I think I'm cautious of starting to like tap this in, tap that in, use different, because um, the circulation in there is still important. So not only the circulation, we've got egress paths to worry about. And this yeah. is this is one of the, you know, we're, we're entering the phase, Tom Gitsunas, of what I was raising earlier about, you know, getting getting a building permit and then changing all the egress paths. So right. we have to, we just have to be, we're going to be careful of that. And we're going to be the police <laughs> on our side. Tom, it was going on all last night too. It's, I think it's Tom's computer. Yeah. I have a new computer on the way via FedEx. It's a, a fan issue. So I, I'm staying muted as much as I can. We're going to be able to isolate the building so in the football season, that they come in, use a snack bar, but not go inside the hall of rink and access the the, uh, the restroom. Restrooms, yeah. Because the restroom, that's the you thing. Can, you can do that, but if you move the snack bar over to the corner, no. No, yeah. So you're going to move the skate rental? Well, I couldn't. Yeah. You, you, you could continue to have the lobby available for restrooms. 
That's just a matter oh, of the rest is fine. That's a snack bar. But if you move the snack bar to the lower left, you could access it from the outside. Right. Snack bar would be available from the exterior only during non hockey. Oh, season. Oh, okay. Yeah, you get, yeah, the lobby would have to be open for bathrooms, but you could exterior and access to the side. So you wouldn't have to hold up the whole rink. Now he's yeah. got, got a police whole rink during football games. So. But yeah, I don't think you have to do that. Though. No, so, you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, to do that. Right. Yeah. But what if you, and again, if we're going to design, we're going to design. <laughs> But if you just flip the uh, bathrooms with the uh, with the uh, dressing rooms, switch them over. Put the dressing uh, rooms down. Go uh, east west, and then you could maybe put an outside uh, access to those bathrooms too. If you maintain. Mark. Yes. And I'm just going to throw one more big <laughs> idea out there. Just one. Yeah. For now. I think so. we, never, we never finished vetting your idea of getting rid of the corridor and combining well, it with okay. the skate this rental. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> this one's bigger. So I have recently <clears throat> talked about what I would prefer as fewer rows of bleachers across the full length of ice for a typical viewing experience on a hockey rink rather than a higher section just at the middle. What we're seeing is we have all this depth that used to serve a purpose. What if we take that whole west wall of the building and we bring it in six to eight feet, and so then we eliminate what is becoming kind of this like extra space or dead space behind the bleachers and so, in essence, you're gaining, let's call it, eight feet by 250 feet in length of square footage of the building that pulls it in. And then we have our four long rows of bleachers that are adequate distance from the ice. Because if you look at the whole length of the building up there, and, and that's what I just asked Mike, like in this, where we're at in the process of the metal building, is it okay if we're asking them where full frame was, you know, this X distance apart, can we change that footprint so it's, you know, eight feet or whatever narrower? Or does that cause some like major scheduling? Do you see a cross section of that? I don't think you can make that judgment. Because the biggest thing, all the bents all come down there and you've those things are cut up as steel bents that come through there. I think you need to have a cross section of the bent and a cross section with the bent is not. And do you have the eight feet? Okay, so somebody drew the line there. That's that blue line. That's what I'm talking about. If we are no longer requiring all that depth in the bleacher space because we are having less bleachers and we, you know, preserve the same quantity of seating in a narrower strip all the way across the ice. I think that's a lot of square footage if we actually decrease the size of the metal building. If you take the hallway change as well, you could essentially make up that delta on the locker room side <laughs> and what you switch, squish. You see what I'm saying? And you, and you, but you could leave the entry building bigger. You don't have to follow that. You can yeah, make the bump can... out 10 or 12 feet instead of the five I, or six feet that it's now can... to leave the lobby a little more space. Hey, Steve, say from a uh, just you know, we heard Christian talk about the engineering and the redesign. All of these type of changes we're talking about, it's going to have very similar conversations with the medical building yeah. contractor. Yeah. So it's all, but it's all on the table. I mean, I think that's where we're at. So we have to talk about it. But this one, I would have to go back and we'd have, once we understood the design, we have to say, what are the implications of doing this and figure it all out? And there would be some re engineering engaged with this. Like, there's no question. And how much would we actually get back? Right? Yeah, I, the, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. in general, when you're talking about engineering versus the dollars per square foot of construction, typically, when you're making these these sizes of changes, the, the construction is still, I think it's still worth it, depending on the engineering is, is uh, you know, people time. If you think about it that way, this is material, this is. But given that we've already contracted for the pre engineer middle building at a price, I, would we actually get any of this back? If it's it's, square footage? it's a good question. It's a definitely a good question. And uh, I don't have, I don't have an answer. But, but you're, you're not changing the metal building, right? It, it, yes. You would just to shrink the, 
He would shrink the building. The space. I'll just suggest that would shrink the metal building. Is that what you're saying? It would also reduce the cooling. It would, and it would reduce the, the concrete. It would reduce all the, it would be ripple effect. And those are things we haven't bought yet. So yeah. it, it's somewhere in the range of 2,000 square feet. So it's, I don't know how to answer your question directly. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it it was, there would be pain on the metal building contractor for sure. You would not see the most bang for your buckets if we did this six months ago. Okay. But if it's still worth considering, I think. Yeah. In 2,000 square feet at whichever, you know, $700 a square foot, it's 1.4. And that's probably not the right number to use, but it is a big number. Third of that or something right now. Yeah. 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 The title building is $73. Oh, there you go. That's a good point. What? No, but it's everything else. Yeah. It's my okay. said, It's the concrete. It's, you know, you. Let's find your heating and cooling. So you're not changing the concrete. You're changing the how you have less slab. You have, you have less slab. You have less slab. I don't know. I thought we were trying to save money. You're saving money on the existing building, not redesigning the whole building. I mean, but you can't do one without the other. Yeah. Oh. That's a whole redesign to metal building, right? right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, uh, but a lot so, of what we're so talking about is 2026. So here we come. That's everything we've talked about other than stripping it down to a rectangle. It's the redesign. So, right. And by the way, it's just so I mean, I think once we started putting all this on the table, it's all on the table. I think it's going to be redesigned. I think it's going to be slowed down, but it saves a lot of money. You kind of have to consider yeah, but if, a, if the building stays somewhere the same, yeah. redesign is more the interior petitions than it's left. <laughs> Mark Amory has her hand raised. You can't see it from here. Jake, you watch it. Thank you. Amory. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Tom. Um, all of this is very creative and I appreciate everybody's creative thinking on this, but let me ask a more basic question. What are we showing the community? We're allegedly going to town meeting in a month to ask for more money. What are we showing them? All of this redesign is going to take time. I really think we need to be focusing on where do we find more money, not how do we hack the existing building apart? If we're showing the community, particularly town meeting, something that is greatly reduced in scope from what we promised them and from what they voted for, there's no way we're getting more money. Uh, I just really think we've got to pour all our creative energy into figuring out where can we find more money to fund what we've done here and what the program we were asked to build is. Just my thoughts. Any comments from the committee? The only thing I, I would say is I believe, you know, what we heard yesterday is the additional available funds is two million and not more than that. So I I love the idea, Anne-Marie, and <laughs> you're the most creative person with finding dollars I have ever <laughs> in my entire career. But I, I, we heard yesterday it's two mil, and I, I just, well, but but two mil from from what? Which which two million? You know, are we talking about the candle know. fund, or are we talking about a, an additional uh, in? How do I want to phrase this? Additional money coming from the debt exclusion because we can ask for within ten percent more on the debt exclusion. So maybe, maybe Anne Marie, it's going back and talking to the chair of the board and moderator and the town administrator, like Monday, and summarize what this 
deliberation has been and we the committee i think it's what i'm getting a sense of the committee feels that they cannot hack anything more out of the building than they can get maybe a couple million but they can't get four is that fair no but it's absolutely fair and we really need to have some kind of public forum prior to this special town meeting to show people what's happening. When is that going to happen and what are we going to be showing them? Agreed, but I think that we need a town executive group meeting first. Yes, agreed, absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, so that we can clearly identify what money are we looking at and how much is it? Okay. The police station is standing because of Emory's <laughs> um, incredible creativity, tenacity, and ability to unearth um, pots of money that that helped get it built. So, so uh, Emory, I, I I very much agree with you. I, I the one comment I'll make, which is perhaps a variation on what you said, is I do think there have been a few ideas that have been tossed out today that actually don't compromise program and in some way represent cost savings that preserve or bring that program that last night we were talking about might disappear. How do we figure out how to vet those quickly? Right. Um, so that we can get to the bottom because I mean, you're right, we need a public forum. We need to have the numbers that we can take to all the various different groups to line this up. I mean, the clock is ticking, um, but there, at least from my vantage point as a non-expert in the actual design side of it, there seems like there's a few things that were tossed out today that like merit like running down very quickly. So how yeah, do I think Tom, to, to go ahead again, we, we, Christian, Christian and I and our team will, will, will study some of these ideas. I think they're, they're good, inventive, you know, fresh eyed look at some of the spaces. So I think without getting engineers involved, we will, um, study some of these ideas and, and, and bring them back to the team, to Skanska and others to, to start to run some square foot figures and figure out what the potential cost savings are. Great. On the flip side, Skanska, this is Mike Morrison, we'll engage with our subcontractor that we have on board now, uh, today, this afternoon, as quick as we get on a call and start talking about these options and, and what the implications are so we can be more educated on the, you know, what we're actually talking about here. This is the metal building. Yeah. Yep. And we can with the with the other ones, we can use our estimate to to try to ballpark well, part of the magnitude. Order right? magnitude. Um, but the complications with our where we're at with the metal building, we need to have some input on that. Catherine Oates has your hand raised. Catherine Oates. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so a couple comments. One is, um, uh, I agree that we want to make sure not to reduce too much programming, but my feeling, I agree with, um, Tom Caputo that it seems like we're trying to make changes that preserve the programming. So I think that's good. Um, I would say, um, you know, one other note, I'm not there in the room, sorry, I'm traveling for work. Um, but uh, I think for all of the things that we want to explore, including you know going to town meeting, asking for money, going to the Kendall Fund, you know doing some design changes, any other thing that we might want to explore, um, if we can just make sure that we have sort of a, a game plan for this. And of course, I'm raising my hand to help with anything where there might not be a volunteer in the room to kind of push things forward, right? Because I think we have to move really quickly. Um, and I agree that um, a public forum or even, um, you know, there are precinct by precinct pre-town meeting meetings uh, that happen where we can start to socialize some of this. Um, and I think having um, really the right, I can't emphasize enough how sort of the narrative can affect the perception of the changes that we would be proposing, right? And so if we can really work to get that narrative right, um, you know, we could be successful with this. Um, and so again, you know, I'm happy to help with, with any of these aspects. So I'll stop there. Bill Shea. Bill Shea, uh, Ted, quick question. Did the bleachers drive the size of the building originally? No. Okay. So, so if we what, what did drive the size of the building? The ice sheet. Well, the ice, I, the ice sheet, but also fitting the program along the, the, the 
set plan south and plan north. Okay. I'm sorry, not plan. Uh, uh, the the actual south and yep. north. Um, we you know we we needed a certain amount of space for locker rooms for Zamboni. In fact, it got a little wider with the Zamboni, um, the ice room, all of that sort of stuff. So there was drivers on each end of the building of the of the ice sheet that were having impact. We need you know we need the four on the south side. We need the four dressing rooms, an egress corridor, the the skate rental thing, restrooms, and a lobby. And and the lobby is you know the corridor going from the arena out to the the sidewalk is is you know even a little narrow. That's why we bumped it out a little bit further. So those are the drivers on the width of the building. How much is it, how much is this building width compared to the last building we had? We already Same. shaved. We shaved ten what eight feet off of that building. I think. So we're we're narrower than we were on the the other building we had. Yes, it was tight. Yeah, that was tight. Exactly. It was not, there's barely, there's not, I think it's the ceiling, how much room behind the, the benches there. Uh, on oh, we had three feet, maybe. Yeah, we might have three feet, right? So I don't know how we can trim it any more than that. In comparison to other ranks, Ted, is this, a, does anybody have the information? Is this? This is not bigger. This is on a very small side. Okay. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it means that would be worse. Okay. Okay, so the path forward sounds like Ted, you're gonna look at the lobby area potentially combining or figuring out where a concession stand might be, but you have the latitude to eliminate the corridor between the dressing rooms, I'm hearing, and potentially the skate room, and maybe it's a combined room. Is that fair? Yeah, I think I think we'll we'll study those ideas and perhaps others because once we you know we we didn't start to move the snack shack and take things apart because there's so many options on the table. But we'll we'll take a, a holistic look um, of you know moving the snack shack and and moving parts and pieces around and, and trying to reduce the building further. So Christian, you and I will work on it when you get when you're back. But, but that'll open up that throat coming into the lobby if you can utilize the corridor and the skate rentals tent, right? Right. That's one of the things we'll look at, Mark. Yes, I said yep. yes. Okay. What other pieces do we want to have them specifically look at? I'd, I'd like to see if you asked for before, Danelle, is a cross-section at a bent with the bleaches yeah. and not the bent. So we understand, does it make sense to start to pull that thing, that sign in? I'm not convinced that blue line is right. And what about Mike? We'll call it Mike's idea. This is this is Mike's idea. Yes. Well, but Mike's idea also had reducing the high bay. That's what that's what we're talking about. Okay, I mean that's in the, oh. that's that was that's the given. That is part of, I guess, a broader rework yes. of the front. But it's it's going to have two. It's going to be the front part of it, and it's going to be narrowing the whole structure. It's two separate issues. Yes, those Agreed. are two separate issues. Agreed. Okay, and. If in fact we move it closer oh, to Concord right. Ave, what does that save us we, in terms we, of? If we make the building shorter, we maintain the Concord Ave location and move it from the socket toward forward. Yeah. Exactly. What is two line will go to the location of what is one line? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll again we'll we'll produce a sketch that shows that and some of the implications of that. We just need we need to sit at a desk with a print and, and work on it. Okay. So uh, a quick comment on the, the two two kind of things looking at. One shrinking it north south um I think is going to be much easier engineering wise versus shrinking it east west and you're making you're changing all the bent sizes and, and widths. That's probably going to be a lot much more of a heavy lift for the metal building folks. Um is my guess. Uh we're we'll, Mike will ask and we'll have a conversation with them but I would say that that's going to be more difficult. They get, they'll have to start kind of from scratch uh, with engineering all the the steel. It also versus just require... versus just chopping off the end of the building, right? That's the, all the same as they go north south um, as the building goes north south. You're right, Jim, because the north south pieces were more stick built than the Correct. large bents that go yeah. from east west. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you're shrinking the width of those big bents uh, that's all re-engineer everything. Right. 
that's a full redesign of the building. It is we, new lighting, yeah. new lighting plan, new 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 solar panel plan, new sprinkler, everything is everything. So I'm uh, just that's a, that's probably going to be a, a real difficult challenge. Uh, but we will ask talk about it. Um, Ted, I don't know if it would be bad if the center's offset from the rink for the ice sheet, um, but it might lead to that, right? Where the ice sheet is not centered in the building. Yeah, we're trying to keep it centered. We have been trying to keep it centered the whole time. We have a task. When 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 should we reconvene? I think the earliest we can do is probably Tuesday. But I will try to set up a meeting, Anne Marie, with uh, with Patrice early next week to discuss finding more money. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm not available Tuesday. We'll have to go through it and figure it out. But it, and Kristen can be there, I guess. But we'd have to we'll have to work it out. And we need some time. We need some time. We you know having we just Friday and Monday is is what we're looking at. So um, so let's talk about when we can. Meet. Just we need 48 hours to post. So why don't we post for Tuesday and Wednesday and we'll just cancel one if we have to. That's fine. Oh, I got Wednesday's good. I can do Wednesday. Okay. Actually, we have an OAC meeting anyway, Wednesday. So why don't we do it instead of that? Or right after that. Or um, something. No, just thinking about the timing. But yeah. Let's do both and we can cancel them. Right. We don't need it. Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. So just, just to, Mark, just to be clear for everyone, we have a meeting posted and scheduled for tomorrow morning. I think what we're, doing is we're, we're suggesting to cancel that and then schedule something next week. Is that correct? That's, that is correct. Wednesday doesn't, Tuesday doesn't work for everybody. And he's not going to be ready. Why don't we schedule, why are we schedule on Tuesday? You're not going to be here Tuesday? I'm not going to be Yeah, I'm going to be here Tuesday. Wednesday I'll be here, but I can't be here Tuesday. So let's we'll post Wednesday. Okay. 7.30, same thing. Okay. We've got to make a bunch of progress between now and Wednesday. Correct. Right, because I mean, the clock is ticking and all this stuff. But can everybody knows that. Come, but on, can we wash that thing we bit? Created last night, so we all have the right numbers and we can get yep. that sent out to the committee that they know where the dollars are. Exactly. Today. I'll clean that up this morning and get that out. Awesome. We've got a lot, of, a lot to ask. In a short amount of time, right? Realistically, yep. It's a lot to ask. Yep. Three and a half days before Wednesday's meeting, so <coughs> get at it. You know, Wednesday we should probably look to see what a good public forum day is because I agree that it's going to be important for us to get out there. You want a separate public forum, or do you want a joint meeting with the select board with a large opportunity for public forum? Try to do that if I meet with the select board chair on early next week, we'll report on it. If that work, see how they want to do it. Yeah. I, I just I, thought it might not be. Yeah, I, I, I that might be better. Then you're only doing it once. But whatever we're but presenting, we better be crystal clear on this and we and no variation on what we're doing because we'll <laughs> We're not crystal clear and everything's all a duck in a row. And we're asking for more. And we're not sure what more is. That's a problem. Okay. It, just just to, you know, one of the one of the tasks that we were the committee was was to put in place was to give give uh, make decisions about the changes and give the architects direction on what to design. So that we could get the documents together and then you know get them to Skanska and such. So um, and, and we were hoping that you know Monday morning we'd be able to start moving that forward. So we're, I'm just stating out loud that we're we're punting that a little bit because we can we're going to study more ideas, but we're not able to start design to get documents together. So um, I think everybody gets that, but I just want to say it out loud because that's been sort of the how we things have been rolling. So. Um, I would uh, say that should be talked about a little bit more. Is everything on the list already 
accepted? Can we move forward on those? And the things that we're studying are kind of, that's like a dual track. Um, can we, can, dual, can, a, can Ted be cut, cut, cut loose in his team? Well, I'm not sure we can, I'm not sure we can, Jim, because I don't yep. want to, I'm not going to set, set my engineers a, a light with, with changes that we talked about last night. If now we're moving program in all kinds of directions, because they're going to, you know, do and undo and redo things. And I think it's it's not prudently spent time. Right now, are we just working on conceptual design? Without, we are. Yeah, we are. don't get consultants involved with this yet. So you say, if you bless it and say, yeah, this is a doable deal, then bring it back to us and then go back to the designer, I mean, the uh, consultants. Well, yeah. we, need, we need costings from yeah. scan. So, so Jim, we need some costing for you. And I think the where we're going is, Moving the bay back, which we're now referring to as the Morrissey uh, nuclear deal. Nuclear at Morrissey, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> to move that bay back to the three, re look at the front of the building, how that all fits together. But it's it's kind of summarizing some of the things we had last night. We just don't have a dollar figure for it. That yes, uh, it, it does. This. I agree with both parts. I think there's just a little bit more. Um, this, there's probably a handful of items that aren't affected by this studying that we can finalize. And uh, we'd have to go through the list again to see which, which they are. But just to keep some progress going, um, maybe it's worth taking a look at that. But I agree with you, Ted, that a lot of the ones that are going to be impacted by relayouts, obviously, we don't want to waste time. Yep. Um, OK, so I just, we'll, we'll, we'll bring back, you know, ideas and adjustments to these ideas for, for Wednesday, but um, and maybe we can get them out earlier. We'll try and get them to the email them to the committee so that people get a, eyes on them before Wednesday, but great. Okay. Mark, I don't know if you're Kate. Well, Catherine, Catherine Oates has her hand up. I don't think she lowered her hand from earlier. So Paris, Sorry, Paris, I didn't correct. Paris. Sorry. Paris again. Okay. And Mark, I don't know if you're taking comments from the public, but you do have one public hand raised. I will take a comment from the public. Lisa Pagoli. Hi, Lisa pa Pagoli. Thank you. Um, I'm going to leave this one alone because it's a mess, and I've already said everything about this that is now happening when we gave a contract to the same people that were having problems with the high school. This wouldn't be a problem if we didn't have to try to put in all that high school stuff again. This is just absolutely insane. And you want more money, <laughs> we're dying. But um, we're, I'm trying to find these videos. Where are the recordings um, posted when they're, they get put up, please? The, the recordings are not posted. They're saved for 30 days on my desktop to create the notes and then they disappear. Excuse, excuse me? These videos were supposed to be recorded so the public can see them. What the hell are you talking about? You, you, they disappear audio. and we can't see them? Is it audio only, Jake? I just started recording these too. So I know, unfortunately. I've been recording for a while. But the uh, it's an audio or video, visual and audio. It's a both? It's both, but it doesn't always do the best job because if someone's sharing the screen, then it goes gray. And I haven't been... Can those be posted, Jake, to um, as we post the meeting minutes? We can do that going forward. Yeah. Well, even as far back as you have. They only last for 30 days. On my computer, they only last for 30 days. Well, where else do they go? Well, I could download them before they go away and see. Them. So we, we can go so for, going forward. These, these, these recordings were supposed to be for the public. They're supposed to be posted on a website. They're not supposed to disappear. That's not the purpose. What would be the point? If you keep them locked up in Please your set. thing for 30 days and then they disappear. If I can jump in, Lisa, this isn't like Belmont Media. It's not Belmont Media recordings. It, it, it's just How the no recording. It's not what it was for. The recordings were so that people could watch them. That was the point of it. That's what the point of the recordings are. People go so they can watch them when they can't get here at 7.30 in the morning because they're going- When it's Bel when it's Belmont Media, but Belmont Media isn't recording this. This is just the note takers' private recordings. Well, why? They're supposed to be recorded. This know. is a mess. What's the point? 
Oh, how convenient for you people. Once again, these get to go poof into nowhere and nobody gets to know except for what you guys want to fluff up and tell them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This this whole town is so bad. It's such a mess. <laughs> Thanks. Lisa, Lisa, we'll take that under advisement. I'll I'll check with the town clerk for what's supposed to happen with these. Yeah. I thought they, I thought they were being posted oh, well, also, uh, Lisa. Uh, All right. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm blown away. And it just is like goes to the fact that this is such a mess and it makes so much sense that these things are disappearing so that nobody can see them. It's just so typical of it. And don't tell me that it's not transparency in all the things that we say becomes true. I've said all this in the beginning. I told you this was going to happen. If you hired the same people, we're in such a mess. And it's all because of the high school. <laughs> we could have had a $10 million beautiful rink, but you got to add, add in locker rooms and sports things and viewing rooms for the football. We're dying. And you people, those aren't needs. Those are wants. <laughs> I go to a lot of rinks and they're metal buildings. They're nice inside. And that's all that they're for. This town is out of control when we have no money. It's unbelievable, but it makes so much sense. It's, it's, <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Lisa. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I think you better take it from Bill. Today. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.